uh, in the sort of food uh, grocery space. We had a, a brand that we acquired that did just not a ton of testing on their side. They sort of had their price and they stuck with it. They had a, a pretty limited ad strategy that they just stuck with. And when we took them over, one of the first things that we do with any brand that we're taking over is we want to start uh, stress testing a, a few things. We want to identify uh, is pricing the way that it should be relative to the market? Uh, are we advertising enough? Are we advertising too much? And I think with this brand, we uh, maybe flew a little too close to the sun, uh, tried a little too much too fast. So there was some um, uh, pricing updates combined with uh, overall just uh, tried to ramp up spend, I think, to close to 2x over the course of the first month. On this episode of the Rich Ad Poirot Podcast, we have Mike Freaky. Today, Mike's going to tell us about how Perch was able to raise $900 million, the importance of building strong teams and the things to look for when acquiring brands. This is a great episode, y'all. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of the Rich Ed, Poor Ed podcast. This is your host, Zach Johnson. What's up, Mr. Dylan Carpenter? You ready to talk about some Amazon ads today? Oh, yeah, and especially on the acquisition topic. I think this one's going to be hot right now. Yes, today's guest, we have the head of advertising at Perch. The I think probably one of the fastest growing aggregators, Amazon aggregators in the space right now. You guys have raised over nine hundred million dollars, and uh, SoftBank led their latest round this just a few months ago at seven hundred seventy-five million. Uh, they've acquired over seventy brands um, in the space and are spending multiple eight figures. We'll spend multiple eight figures. Um, this year on paid advertising, mostly uh, mostly Amazon ads, and Mike uh, is going to dial us in on what's working now, what's not when it comes to Amazon ads across multiple brands. Mike is a former agency man uh, uh, from an ad agency, Google Ads agency called Exclusive. Mike, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, dude. Uh, I think you're going to have an amazing perspective here on um, just the level of scale and also uh, just the amount of ad spend you guys manage across so many different brands and, and SKUs will be super interesting. And quite honestly, we haven't had a ton of people doing Amazon ads on the show. So this will be a breath of fresh air. Oh, and I imagine once people hear about how you are killing it, man, it's, it's hopefully it's a, a little flooding over there. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mike, tell everybody a little bit about what you do day to day as a head of advertising over at Perch. Absolutely. Uh, so at Perch right now, we're in a very growth focused zone. So as part of that, I am growing my team quite a bit, trying to build out uh, just a, a group of really great people who can uh, own the day to day management of the Amazon ads, Google ads, Facebook ads, everything that we're doing to scale up our brands. Uh, I think a lot on my side is trying to identify uh, what sort of playbooks we, one, feel really strong with right now. And then two, how can we start to identify you know, what we don't know and expand into some tests that I think maybe a lot of companies just don't have the, the luxury of being able to run. That's exciting. Now, out of curiosity, how big are these teams? Uh, right now, I'm trying to get up to, I think, seven, eight dedicated on my team specifically by end of the quarter. Um, and potentially a 10 man squad uh, or 10 person squad, I should say, uh, by end of the year. Heck yeah. And you just kind of have a specialist on the Google side, the Facebook, the Amazon side, all in kind of more or less one team to kind of keep that synergy alive, more or less. Uh, I think that's one way that, that we're looking at doing it right now because we are uh, very Amazon focused. That's where the majority of the, the town is. And then we're looking to supplement the rest with uh, really good agency partnerships. Heck yeah. Do y'all got a favorite niche you're diving into right now that's just been super fruitful? Oh, man. Uh, I think for me, I think the pet space has actually been uh, pretty exciting. Mm. We have a, a few uh, acquisitions there that have been a lot of fun. Oh, especially when you can throw dogs up anywhere and cats. People love that stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. One thing I love well, about yeah. Perch is that you guys actually 
you guys are pretty open about the different brands you guys acquire. And um, and you have some pretty popular ones. Maybe maybe break down some of the ones that the listeners might recognize. Absolutely. I think uh, one of the, the top ones uh, that has been a lot of fun for me to, to start working with is called Baby Merlin. Uh, we have a few in the sort of baby goods space where we're one of the uh, best sellers of sleep suits on Amazon. I think we're uh, pretty high up there for Target as well. Uh, that's a, a to me, that's a fun brand in that the amount that they've been able to grow their name recognition on a very limited ad budget is just going to mean the growth uh, potential for them is pretty pretty much to the moon now that we can throw some weight behind them. And that's basically like the like the jumpsuit for like kids so they can't like move <laughs> when they sleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and then we also have uh, another fun one, Hertz Go. We're the number one seller of dog brushes on Amazon. Cool. I actually own this brush. Uh, so that's <laughs> awesome. And then you guys are also in teeth whitening. Is that right? We are Cali white. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're pretty high up there in the uh, teeth whitening kit space and uh, a vegan, sh- uh, vegan toothpaste. V- okay. Vegan I, toothpaste. I, I, I've never gotten vegan toothpaste. So this will, this will be a first year. Uh, and then what about some, you guys have beard soap. What is this? We, uh yeah i I think that's a tame the wild uh so beard trimmer beard beard care all all that sort of fun stuff um have a a pretty uh fast growing beauty uh beauty and self-care uh product line yeah and i may have remembered this when we were when when we were at the perch booth at prosper in las vegas do i remember correctly that there was like a some like hose or something like that that you guys sell or Lexi hose. Yeah. It's actually one of the, the newest ones. So uh web deals direct is our largest, latest acquisition. Yes. Uh, that's, that one's pretty massive uh, $80 million business. That's led by a lot of those sorts of brands. So Flexi hose and um, space saver bags uh, to their big lines. Love it. I love it. All right, dude. So let's, let's get into it. Let's talk about your rich ad, which brand are, uh, are we, going to get into today or which category are we going to talking about when it comes to your rich head yeah so i have my presty champagne flutes for you uh <laughs> the a uh, really fun space especially now that people are you know getting back into the swing of having parties uh seeing people uh socializing a bit and when we had uh, all of that starting back up in uh, April, May. We actually ran into a bit of a snag where our number one champagne flute product uh, ran completely out of inventory. But obviously the space was still moving. So too, we many, ended up... too many people drinking uh, during COVID? Is that, was that what the issue? Or I think so. All, all, all these people <laughs> who are trying to make up for no weddings last year have all of the weddings this year. <laughs> Uh, but we had a secondary ASIN that was, you know, middle of the back of page two ranked organically. Uh, we were able to shift a lot of attention there, uh, both from ads uh, that became a, a large focus for us. But we also had our merchandising team come do, give it a complete overhaul. So we updated the brand with a new storefront. Uh, we gave things a, a whole lot of new, fresh uh, lifestyle images, uh, putting a lot of the focus on just the, uh, I guess, the, you know, locales and situations where you're going to be using the product and uh, all of that just came together really well with the uh, growing category uh, where we were able to go from uh, back of uh, page two to the number two ranked uh, champagne flu on Amazon, which again, over a period where this is a product that was not meant to be our hero, this was meant to sort of just be a secondary ASIN. Uh, the fact that we were able to get it to do as well as our primary, uh, these are not linked products. Uh, it was pretty wild. That is nuts. How long did that take to go from that page two to literally number two? Like, I think that... it, that was about a three week period uh, to get, to, once, once we shifted focus to that, uh, it was a, a gold glitter um, champagne flute. Once we shifted attention to it, it took us about three weeks. I think we went from, uh, page two to top half of page one after about four days. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. So walk everybody through like the life cycle of just how Amazon ads help with uh, ranking and reviews and um, the the overall 
impact the ad strategy had on that. For sure. I look at Amazon ads as very much a, a Amazon in general is a pay to play uh, environment. You need ads in order to succeed. And I'm not saying you need ads in order to make some sort of a profit. But if you're going to be you know, trying to achieve scale, you're trying to uh, grow and be one of these top competitors, you can't do so without ads. Um, on our side, we use a lot of it's a focus of just maximizing, in many cases, maximizing coverage, at least on uh, areas that will convert. Uh, conversion rate is going to be a big, big aspect of Amazon that if you just try to go into a space that your product isn't relevant for, and this is where a lot of the updates our merchandising team made really helped us succeed. Because uh, if you're not converting, even if you're spending a whole lot of money, you're not going to be growing your organic ranks well. Or even if you get up there, once you stop spending, everything's going to come crashing back down to earth. Uh, but when you have a good product page, you got people who are uh, just willing to convert at a, a high rate. Uh, everything's a lot more possible. Interesting. <laughs> Zach, you know anything about Amazon, or is this all fresh for you too? <laughs> oh yeah, we're we're all we're all learning here. We're all learning here. Uh, so, what is it like managing ads for seventy brands? Um, is this is this just like in your ad agency days all over again, but inside of Perch? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of similar. I think the nice thing at Perch is really, if anything, we're more of a a, a tech company. Um, so about one third of our team by headcount is in our tech department. So what enables us to manage the brands in a way that we do is a commitment to technology. Uh, we're building out a lot of our own internal uh, softwares, reporting capabilities that makes it a heck of a lot easier for me just to see on a brand by brand level what's going on. Uh, we have about one and a half people per brand. So uh, it's a, a, I guess, uh, not too overwhelming when we have all that support behind us. My gosh, one and a half people per brand. Uh, that's that's crazy. It, it just makes me think about how inefficient so many other brands are. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nuts. I'm, I'm more curious how this half person looks. You know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bad joke. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Funnel Dash's ad card, the only charge card exclusively for your digital ad spend. And if you're an ad agency that manages seven or even eight figures a year in media and ad spend for your clients, and you're looking to double your profits over the next six to 12 months, then check out ad card. See, the typical agency model is this. You charge 10% of your spend, you make 10 to 20% margin at the end of the day. So that's really one to 2% of your client's spend that is profit in your business. The easiest way to double that is to really find a way to earn in that one to 2% cash back of the card that is on file of your client's ad account. And before ad card, what you had to do was invoice all your clients for their ad spend up front, which is really difficult on a cash flow basis and very difficult ask. And then you had to put the card on your own Amex or whatever card of choice to get that level of value back into your business. With AdCard, it's entirely different and streamlined. You simply get your clients on AdCard and make yourself the agency of record and you'll get the cash back as long as you're managing the ad spend. It's a great way to double your profit without doing any additional work. Check it out at FunnelDash.com. So, I mean, we got a little taste of the champagne, you know, rich ad there. I mean, tell us a nightmare scenario. I mean, what's your pour at here? Yeah, so we have a, a tough one for us. So uh, in the sort of food uh, grocery space, we had a, a brand that we acquired that did just not a ton of testing on their side. They sort of had their price and they stuck with it. They had a, a pretty limited ad strategy that they just stuck with. And when we took them over, one of the first things that we do with any brand that we're taking over is we want to start uh, stress testing a, a few things. We want to identify uh, is pricing the way that it should be relative to the market. Uh, are we advertising enough? Are we advertising too much? And I think with this brand, we, uh, maybe flew a little too close to the sun, uh, tried a little too much too fast. So there was some um, uh, pricing updates combined with uh, overall just 
uh, tried to ramp up spend, I think, two, close to 2x over the course of the first month. And what we ended up finding there was uh, effectively no growth in the brand. It, it just ended up uh, cannibalizing sales quite a bit. So not great when the goal is to grow sales and you're making the same, but spending twice as much. Go figure. That's a great lesson, Mike. <laughs> more spend doesn't equal more sales. The yeah, end. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> keep it simple i like this now out of curiosity with you kind of scaling this brand up is that like you know 100k to 200k or 500k to a million out of curiosity <laughs> there uh yeah with the are you talking about the sales for just that brand more of kind of the spin side of things just if you if you, know, you know ramping it up or doubling the budget i was just more or less curious you know is it more of you know going from 100k to 200k or 500 to a million just because you know 500k there you know bump is pretty hefty yeah i think well on a, a monthly basis i think for at least because this happened with at least two brands that are top of mind for me uh we're looking closer to say 20k to 40k okay. um yeah, like I said, the relatively small ad spend budgets from what the previous owner had been doing. So we we're just trying to see, you know, best case scenario, how far can we grow this if we gave it a very aggressive strategy? <laughs> now, Attic, how long does it take y'all to realize, oh, gosh, this is not working. We need we need to, you know, change it up. <laughs> is it a week, a month, a couple of months? Yeah, that's. Uh, I'd say in some cases as uh, quickly as about four days, uh, depending on the, the change that we make. Um, I, I can think of one where, where we increased the price of something by about, God, what was that? I think we increased the price 66% just as a test to see uh, would, would this sustain. Mm -hmm. And I think we didn't see that, that big of a drop off in uh, end of day revenue. Uh, but unit volume tanked, conversion rates tanked, and that started to... I, I don't think it, it hurt our, uh, our organic ranks too bad, but uh, knowing how important the conversion rate side of things are, uh, that was a pretty easy one to start pulling back. So Otherwise, most of these tests would say about two or three weeks. What happens... Right, so like... Oh, I, I'm going to make a generalization about aggregators for a second, but it's like... Please. <laughs> please but it seems like it's just like really good cro and then like a paid media shop right <laughs> like, uh and then maybe some better supply chain logistics um and i'm like way again way oversimplifying here but in the cro side there's like only so many playbooks right that when you acquire a brand it's like how are we gonna you know three to five x ten x this this brand and when like lever number one paid ads is like not the lever you get the pull, like where do you go from there? Or it's like, okay, we're like, let's go into pricing. And then and what, I don't know, maybe just list out the different playbooks that you guys run after acquiring a brand to see how you're going to grow it. Yeah, I love that question. So in, it, ways that we're looking at growing our brands, because again, like you said, ads aren't going to be this magic bullet that you can always use. Uh, so I think oh, really? other, oh man, I, that's what whole, I thought that's what this whole show is about. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> uh, I, I think that the other ways that we'll try to grow things. So one, uh, can we go into other marketplaces? So Walmart, Target, uh, eBay are, are three of the big ones for us. Uh, can we be expanding a lot more in international? Uh, I think part of that is growing with Amazon as they sort of expand in the market uh, and, and become a, a larger part of what's going on in the EU, things like that, as well as can we outpace Amazon and just actually gain market share in those locations? Uh, those are going to be some of the big ones, obviously uh, updating merchandise, updating uh, how are we just basket building, introducing uh, people who are fans of some of our brands and then start to cross sell against other brands that are comparable uh that baby space man really good people who are looking to get uh, sleep suits what do you know they're looking to also get some soft baby books <laughs> ltv let's go so, <laughs> pricing new marketplaces uh i heard basically just a buy and hold strategy there which is like let amazon do the growth for you um you got paid ads uh what else what other what other playbooks do you have yeah, I think a lot of it is going to be how are we uh, driving demand to? So sometimes that's 
uh, ads on Amazon where we can uh, go after people who are just, you know, in market searching. Sometimes that's going to be entirely off Amazon. So what are we using social media for to identify people who are uh, not, they, they might be in market from an audience perspective, but they're not in the act of doing that search then and there. Uh, we're looking at YouTube as a big way of doing that too. I think influencers is a really exciting space. Everything that we can do on affiliate to uh, just find people who, again, they're they're not in the act of conducting their their search to buy live on Amazon, but they're going to be a good fit. They're going to be someone who can then come back. I think especially YouTube influencer is a fun space for me where um, we've seen instances you run a video with somebody, you have them promote you, and then they just keep coming back. Uh, you can get you know extra couple hundred thousand clicks a month uh, for any given product you're running. It's just an additional stream to continue the sales flow. All right, let's get into it. Third and final question here. Let's talk about a financial principle or hack on how you've gone about managing multiple eight figures and spend. Now, I want to provide a little more color here, which is you've raised $900 million, right? <laughs> so to maybe, uh, you know, someone looking from the out that are like uneducated eyes, like, oh, they just have unlimited money. <laughs> so like budgets really don't matter. But uh, you guys also have a really lean team and a really lean shop and, and your, your capital efficient. So how do you, you know, how does it work uh, when it comes to, you know, what, what's your, what does your KPIs look like? Are, are there, are you leaning more into LTV? Are you, um, or is it acquisition the same <laughs> as everybody else? Just make the money on the front end. Yeah, I mean, I think for us, we have the benefit of being in a position where each brand can have a separate goal set. So anything that we're doing in sort of the the beauty space, lifestyle brands, we're going to be managing a, a, a lot differently than uh, some of these more. I mean, even I, I'm thinking some of our kitchen gadgets, we're targeting more basket building as opposed to repeat purchasers. Uh, so I think... For me, one of the main ways that I'm looking to achieve scale across all of these different brands is something I'm just calling smart samples. So knowing when to consolidate data to create more meaningful sample sizes to drive action from. I think because we have access to like, every single search that an actual customer on Amazon is, is typing in and we can go after those, it's easy to get lost in the weeds of you know every random long tail search that maybe has you know, 50 different searches a month. Uh, and, and you're just not going to be able to make too many big decisions from that. But where can we break things down? Where can we find the commonalities and intent behind what a customer is really looking for? Uh, one area for that, I'd say, is just trying to identify uh, for shoppers. When someone's uh, searching for product, for occasion, product, for user... Mm. Uh, and then breaking that down for how can we just target people who are searching for that user, for that occasion, for that use case in general. Mm. That's awesome. I was literally uh, just making that like it's like in Google. Everybody's just like best thing, best this, best that, best this. And um, but four, I like that. That's a really good playbook for keyword research. Yeah, I'd say four is probably my my favorite word on Amazon. If, if someone can identify uh, to me that they're in market more so than anybody else, I'll pay more for that click every day of the week. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome, man. Mike, you over delivered today, my friend. Thank you so much. You've been an amazing guest on, on the podcast. Tell everybody a little bit how they can get in touch with you and what you're up to next. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think after this, I'm going to play some disc golf, but if you want to. <laughs> You want to talk to me more about Amazon? I think LinkedIn is the best place to find me. Uh, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Mike Freaky, uh, F R E K E Y. I'd say that's probably the best spot to keep up with whatever I'm, I'm doing. Oh, um, and what do you have to say for anybody that owns the Amazon brand and, and uh, might want to sell? I'd say you probably want to just look for a company that knows what they're doing and knows all of the different ways to grow uh, and make sure that, you know, I think for a lot of you, you sellers, these companies are your baby. You know, you, you built this from the ground up. You want a company that's able to uh, give everything that level of care. And I think Perch is going to be absolutely that spot for you. Hmm. Boom. There you have it. I love it. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening. 
thanks so much for listening to another episode of the Rich Ad Poor Ad Podcast. If you're like me and listen to podcasts on the go, go ahead and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and richadpoorad.com slash podcast. And if you absolutely love the show, go ahead and leave a review and a comment, share with a friend. If you do, take a copy, screenshot of it, email me, zach at funnel-dash.com, show me you left a review, and I'll give you a free copy of the Rich Ad Poor Ad book. To learn more about the book, go to richadpoorad.com. To leave a review, go to richadpoorad.com slash review. Thanks again.